What's going on guys, Matt Sheldon here from Become Elite, and today I wanna to dive into ball mastery drills. Are they something that every single player should implement into their training, or are they actually just a waste of time? So welcome to the video. So I consider a ball mastery drill as anything that's done in a tight space where the focus is on the manipulation and control of the ball. Some examples of this would be the one by one yard box dribbling, V taps, four cone footwork drills, and the Ronaldinho drill. And the three main arguments against these ball mastery drills that I hear from some coaches or players is that number one, they're not game realistic at all. Number two, your head is just staring directly down at your feet. And three, you rarely see professional footballers doing these drills. So in today's video, I thought I'd give my own opinion on the topic. So without further ado, let's put the time on the screen. Let's ignore it completely and let's get into the video. First, are ball mastery drills game realistic? In my head, whenever I'm training or whenever I'm developing a training program, I always like to imagine a tiered system with all of the drills ranked from the most game realistic down to the least game realistic. The most game realistic drill would have to be 11 v 11 match. There's nothing more game realistic than that. Just underneath that, we would have like small sided games, 7 v 7 to big goals, five aside games, 3 v 3 to mini goals, drills focused just around playing footy. Underneath that, we might have drills like rondos, possessions, and 1v1s. These are drills that are focused slightly more into one topic like possession, 1v1 attacking or defending, or maybe combination play. Underneath that, we have drills that are focused even more into a specific skill such as crossing and finishing drills, passing patterns, long ball distribution drills, shooting drills, etc. Finally, at the very bottom, we have drills that are focused into the smallest components of a skill. And that's stuff like two touch, soccer tennis, ball mastery drills, volley and footwork drills, juggling, etc. So just from seeing that list, there is some truth behind the fact that ball mastery drills aren't 100% game realistic. They just aren't. You will never do a footwork pattern over and over again in the same spot in a real match. You will never juggle the ball a hundred times in a real match. You will never try to keep the ball up in the air using only two touches without using your thigh or your head in a real match. But that doesn't mean they don't work on improving a specific skill that will translate over to a real match. It's like that famous saying, and I have no idea who said this, but you don't need to be able to juggle the ball a hundred times in order to be a professional footballer, but every single professional footballer will be able to juggle the ball a hundred times. These unrealistic drills focus in on improving small skills like your first touch out of the air, your general comfort with the ball at your foot, or your manipulation of a ball over a tight space, and by improving those, you will 100% see the benefit when it comes to a real game. Now, having said all of that, I do think majority of your training should be focused more on these game realistic drills. A great example of this would be from like my own off-season training. If you guys watch those videos and watch how I train in the off-season, you'll see that 50% of the training really is just small-sided games or 1v1s. And then I would say about 30% of the training is focused on specific skills, passing patterns, crossing and finishing, shooting drills, etc. And the final 20% of our training was kind of focused on the unrealistic drills, two touch, soccer, tennis, ball mastery drills, juggling, stuff like that. And lastly, honestly, I think a lot of players say that these individual drills or these ball mastery drills or the stuff that you can do in your own backyard isn't going to help you as a way of justifying not doing it themselves. They don't want to put in the work by themselves in their backyard. So they kind of convince themselves and try to convince others that those drills aren't going to improve anything about your game. You do what you can, where you are with what you have. And if what you have is your backyard and a few cones, then you do ball mastery drills, juggling, and the unrealistic drills, and you will still be able to improve your game. Now, if that makes up 100% of your training, then I think we do have a problem. But if you're supplementing your own team training, group training games with just that individual unrealistic ball mastery drills, I think it will have huge benefits to your game. Number two, are these ball mastery drills actually teaching you bad habits like keeping your head down? In my opinion, I don't think they are. I think they're just honing in, focusing on one very specific part of the game and working that part of the game. If you really think that, then just pick up your head while you're doing these ball mastery drills. If you're by yourself, every few seconds, just pick up your head, scan around, and then get back to the ball mastery drill. Or if you have a partner or a coach, just have them hold up a number on their fingers or lift up a color cone or bib, and you just have to pick up your head and shout out the color or the number that they're holding. But honestly, in my opinion, I really don't think you even have to do that. I think you can. I 
think it adds an extra dimension to the drill. I think that's great, but I don't think you have to. You're focusing in and training the mastery of the ball underneath your foot. You're not training vision at that time. In the same exact way, when you're doing rondos, you never check your shoulder behind you. Does that mean by doing a rondo that you're gonna reinforce the bad habit of never checking your shoulder? No, that just means that when you get to the passing patterns or when you're playing in the game, that's when you have to focus on checking your shoulder. The ball mastery drills just focus in on that skill. This is called learning a skill by deconstruction. You deconstruct a big picture skill down to its very small components, train those components separately, and then at the end, you combine all the components and train them together. I view ball mastery drills as skills that you need in the game just broken down into their smaller components. Rolling the ball back with the sole of your foot like in a V-tap or instinctual quick touches like in the Ronaldinho drill or really perfecting that first touch out of the air like in a game of two touch. Those are all drills focused in on a deconstructed skill. Deconstructing a skill to its smaller components is something that's used everywhere, from the classroom to the office to even different sports. In fact, most sports that involve some sort of handling of a ball will have ball mastery drills. American football, lacrosse, basketball, rugby, water polo. In every single one of these sports, you will see that same skill deconstruction where they take the game and break it down to its fundamental elements and work on improving those skills. And you will see athletes doing very unrealistic things like dribbling two basketballs at the same time or shooting one-handed from a stationary position under the basket or playing soccer tennis to work on skills that will translate over to the game. So yes, ball mastery drills, especially if you're not incorporating picking up your head, are not going to work on all aspects of the game. They're not gonna work on vision, but I don't think they're gonna reinforce bad habits. That's what other drills are for. Number three, why don't you see professionals doing ball mastery drills more often then? We rarely see this because when we do get to watch professionals train, typically we're watching their team training sessions. In team trainings, and especially in professional level team trainings, the goal has completely shifted from individual skill development to team performance. The primary goal is how can we win this weekend versus how can I develop this player's touch? Looking at my team, if we all went in the line and did ball mastery drills for an hour, is that the best way our team is gonna win against El Paso this weekend? Or would it be better to work on our team press, our team shape, building from the back, position specific drills like me doing crossing while the strikers are finishing and the center backs are working on their long balls. I don't wanna say that professionals have mastered that and they don't need to work on it or they perfected ball mastery because that's not true, but they've reached a sufficient level in that skill where it's good enough and now the focus again to win at the weekend is on other things. But if you look closely and you look at the players on the side or you watch the players that are staying after training or coming before training, you will see professional level players doing these very low tiered games like two touch or soccer tennis or doing seated juggling like Ben Foster in one of his uh, recovery sessions. You will see players doing these types of things, but those drills make up a very small minority of their full training regimen. So to sum up, what is my conclusion with ball mastery drills? Well, I 100% believe the majority of your training should 100% be on these more game realistic drills. But I definitely think you should always incorporate these more unrealistic drills because they might give you a little bit more exposure or improvement of skills that you might not really develop by just focusing on what's game realistic. And just anecdotally, just from my own experience, I can't even tell you how much sharper I've gotten with the ball underneath my feet just from doing these ball mastery drills or how much better my touch feels in a game controlling those long switching balls after playing two touch every single day before training for years. So as long as you continue to stay balanced with your full training regimen, I definitely think that ball mastery drills should be implemented in everybody's training routine. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. How'd I do on time? Oh!